when neutrons are left to their own devices, they decay, and relatively quickly. We can measure this decay, but different measurement techniques give different times. This brings into question our understanding of how and why neutrons decay. The results from this latest measurement hope to help solve this problem. But does it get us all the way there? Let's discuss it. A neutron is one of the three types of particles that make up an atom. The electron, which is a fundamental particle, and two composite particles, the proton and the neutron, which are made of smaller particles called quarks and gluons. When bound together in atoms, these particles are incredibly stable, staying in the same state for more than the lifetime of the universe. But when neutrons roam free, they don't last very long at all, eventually decaying into a proton, an electron, an electron neutrino, within approximately 15 minutes. This is not the same for protons and electrons, which seem infinitely stable. Some theories suggest that protons may decay just in around 10 to the 34 years. So we may have to wait a while to see this. Nonetheless, neutrons do decay quite quickly, and they seem to not always decay in the same way. Currently, there are two different methods for measuring the lifetime of a neutron, the bottle method and the beam method. In the bottle method, neutrons are cooled down to ultra cold temperatures and placed in a vacuum, which is called a bottle. This bottle is lined with magnets at the bottom to prevent the neutrons from touching the surface and reacting with the atoms there. This is called a magnetogravitational trap and is made of a vast Halbach array, which acts on spin polarized neutrons. After the bottle is loaded with neutrons, the scientists wait for some time and then count the number of neutrons left in the bottle. In this way, they can determine the lifetime of the neutrons. In the beam method, neutrons are placed into a beam and then the number of electrons and protons that are made from the neutrons decaying is detected. And these two methods give different lifetimes, with the neutrons in the beam having on average a lifetime that is 10 seconds longer than when measured using the bottle method. This has been very perplexing as the difference is well beyond noise. In order to solve this dilemma, we need to measure the lifetime with even greater precision. This latest measurement using the bottle method has just made a huge improvement in the noise, finding a lifetime of 877.75 seconds with an error of less than a second. And this still shows the same difference in lifetime to the beam method. In fact, this latest measurement is so precise that it is almost the level of probing theory predictions of the standard model. Now we just need the beam method to also catch up to this precision, and then maybe this disagreement will be clearly understood or maybe it will still remain perplexing. There is a relatively new alternative method that is still in its infancy, the space method. This method relies on the fact that most planetary bodies eject neutrons when hit by cosmic rays. Some of these neutrons will escape the planet, but others will be caught by the gravity well and fall back down. By comparing the number of neutrons and protons that are detected in the atmosphere, an estimate for the lifetime can be made. Currently, this is performed in Earth's atmosphere as it's relatively close by. But ideally, we'd use another planet like Venus, which has an atmosphere that absorbs a lot less neutrons. There are plans to perform this exact task, so we'll have to wait and see the results. But why is there a difference in the decay times? Is there something special about neutrons being contained in beams? Or is there something wrong with the experiment? Well, one alternative explanation is that neutrons don't always decay to the same product. Maybe some of the time neutrons decay to a type of particle is very difficult to detect, that being dark matter. If neutrons did sometimes decay to dark matter, then this could explain the difference, as the bottle method measures the number of neutrons, while the beam method measures the number of protons. Thus, the beam method may miss some of the neutron decays. This would be very interesting if this turned out to be accurate. Either way, currently, we are at the level of measurements now that we can start to probe new physics without the need to smash particles together at massively high energies like at the LHC. This is very exciting and hopefully we'll be able to see more exciting results soon. Thanks for watching. Have fun. See you next time.